We are live for the lead gen month, which is the last session in the entire lead gen series. We have covered lots of topics in the entire month. 13 bite-sized videos, 13 strategies, and 13 different ways to generate leads for your programs and for your uh consultations, programs, or whatever that you're offering to your audience. And this is a live Q&A for the entire month, whether you'll be, you were able to watch the videos or you are not able to watch the videos. Hop onto the live, ask your questions. The Zoom link is in the comments and it would also be in the description of the chat. I will just quickly put the Zoom link in the comments. It is also in the description. Hop on and ask your questions. Hi, Sophia. I knew you would be joining today. I've put the Zoom link in the chat. Hop onto the Zoom room and ask us your questions. Is it a question about Instagram optimization or Instagram outreach? Or would you like to use LinkedIn as one of your strategies and you would have questions around it? Or would it be Google search engine or covering podcasts for SEO, for, uh, covering podcasts for leads? We also, uh, uh, we also went through a lesson which was rank with SEO and we also did YouTube growth. There are so many topics to cover. You can ask questions, whichever makes the most sense to you. Hi, Sophia. You're muted, dear. Hello, I'm trying. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Yes, I didn't have the occasion to see the time to see all uh, of your amazing tutorials that were really helpful. So I just have some questions. I don't. I didn't see all of them. You know. That's okay. Please go uh, ahead. So I already had uh, put some on the the other life and then you told me that it was better to do it on this one because this was uh, specifically for the um, lead magnet. So maybe yes, I'll correct. try to ask again those ones. So uh, one of them, it was uh, when it was the Instagram a lead magnet tutorial that you've made you were you mentioned that the um, posts should be in the order of value test offering value then testimonial and then our offer you know our offer right now i just have the appointments because the the program i launch and then i close the doors and I mentioned that my strategy, uh, my strategy is usually at Mondays I have a quote, and then on uh, Tuesdays I have a reels, and then Wednesdays a, car a carousel, and Thursdays uh, engagement, and Fridays a friendly reminder. And then I asked, uh, like, uh, how can I, within this strategy, do this kind of thing you told me of value testimonial and offer okay so what you can do is you can always offer value in the reel that you're posting because reel is something that is working on instagram so you have that 30 seconds to one minute of time to gather attention of the person by providing them value and not asking them anything so you can always provide value in terms of creating a reel when it comes to a testimonial you can include it with your engagement posts so whenever you're posting out a testimonial, you can have a call to action saying that, uh, do you relate to this? Or if you were X, then what would you do? Or, you know, do you have a similar situation? Something of that sort. So testimonial can always be clubbed with an engagement post. And the last one is yeah. offer. Offer can be done anywhere. It can be in a quote post also. It can be in some other post that you're making. It can also be in a reel. It is not mandatory that always a reel will be a value. Some weeks, a reel can be an offer as well. So this is how you can use the combination. 
Usually what I've been doing with reels is um, that uh, I always offer value and then in the end I always try to uh, make a CTA to a lead magnet like uh, if I right. if I'm speaking about things about my avatar about my public and then I say okay I have a manual that uh, answers you the three uh, two uh, top questions about this subject or I have a, a guide for relaxation so usually in the end of a reels I always try to make a CTA nevertheless I don't have what now is becoming very fashionable among the big influencers is that you put in the comments a word and then there are all these programs that uh, when the persons make the words you DM them directly Today. for the lead magnet I don't have that. You can, you can do that. It's called an automation tool. There are multiple available in the market. The most uh, hyped one is ManyChat, but you would have to see if that fits into the budget uh, according to, you know, your goals and your, um, you know, the entire strategy. Other tools that are there uh, could be found on AppSumo. You can go and find out automation tools that are available for a one-time deal on AppSumo as well. So you could test which tool works for you and you can always get that tool. It is done through an uh, automation tool. Yeah, push. Um, yeah. Yes, for now, I also, I don't know if I could risk it to try to do it manually if somebody put something in the comment and then just manually DM them the thing. If not, what I've been telling is basically directing the persons to my blog and then when I share the reel in the story i put a link directly to the lead magnet like that and uh so in the stories uh i use a lot of direct links to the lead magnets even if it is just sharing to the story my quote and then i try to somehow make a connection between the the quote and the lead magnet and i offer a free discovery call so this is one of the things that instead of saying the persons to have an appointment with me in the offer, what I'd say always in the offer is about the free discovery call. Correct. And I think that makes sense as well. You're, I will you know, take your question, the first one, wherein you can do it manually, but the only thing is it will be scalable until a certain point. Because if yeah. somebody is you know, putting that word two o'clock in the night, of course, you're not going to be available to send that reply. It will only be your next morning and as and when you're available to open the Instagram. So you can do exactly. it as a temporary practice. But then eventually, if you want to drive sales, then you would have to use that automation tool. Yes, of course. Yeah. So also about the, the the emails that you had, the tutorial about the emails, and then you mentioned that there were several types of marketing uh, emails. And then you said that there was an, a, a story email, a value email, offer emails, newsletter, case studies, and automat automated webinar emails. So my thing is, I just have a weekly newsletter. And my question is, if I could, within the weekly newsletter, do all of these different emails? Because in fact, my last newsletter, I already did what you mentioned in the email story. I already did some of my personal story so that the persons have some identification and then in the end the cta was okay if you need support uh always uh book the discovery call because what i want to launch um now in the short term it depends how what i can do is really an online community but for now I just have this like free discovery call so that the persons after can put an appointment. So I already tried to do that in the email stories. And I was thinking that after I could every week, you know, just um, alternate between the different kind of marketing emails you mentioned. You can absolutely do that. There are two things that you can do here. One, you can have these variations into your existing newsletter that is going out right now. Or you can incorporate one additional day of sending one more email to your audience, rotating the different subjects week on week. So it is absolutely as you're comfortable. Okay. Yeah.
yeah for now i have uh, i'm juggling with a lot of things and i have to tell you i try to minimize work but because what i'm doing is really i followed the also all the tutorials of david in september about memberships and according to that i'm really putting a lot of effort on building uh, the um, the membership site and all of that but i'm very detailed on design and so i'm taking my time so for now i'm trying to minimize really the the work okay so also tutorial about the reels that you've mentioned you said we should use always a hook first and then like a personal story like I went to the restaurant and saw that the menu had a lot of options and then yeah. uh, and then somehow make a bridge uh, of, I don't know, the options that the persons want to make in their work life and then introduce our uh, offer. So my question is, uh, is this a, a sort of thing uh, that uh, we should always introduce in a reels or is this some things that we also alternate with different kind of reels? I would say that 90% of the time the structure works, but there is always an option of testing and altering and seeing that what is working for you and your audience. Because there is a, a slight chance that maybe the structure that is working for everyone else does not fit quite well in your industry and your audience. So while you use it, you need to keep altering and testing as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because the... Um... There was, you mentioned that there was like two different types of reels. It was the visual reels and the verbal reels. And right. then uh, for the visual reels, I was thinking about, uh, um, you know, like my aud audience is highly sensitive persons and they are sensitive like to lights. And I was thinking like do right. a visual reels, like with two light bulbs and uh, explain that the white lights are not good for us. Always choose the yellow lights. And so uh, in these visual reels, according to uh, what you think, is that we should always try to put also a personal story of ours. Yes, correct. Uh, see, it depends upon what is the topic you're talking about. Most of the time, a personal story works really well is because the person is able to relate that, you know, oh, I'm speaking to another human being. And when you just go fact based on Instagram, everybody is talking about the same facts, then how are we different? So that's why personal story always kind of keeps you above your competition. Okay. So, yeah, well, uh, I have to tell you that all of your things really helped me a lot. I transformed, uh, like I mentioned, all I of my uh, funnels, you know, all my, my leak magnets, according to the first um, code uh, on page that, you, that you've that uh, you shared. And it was really great because my funnels didn't have a nice design and all of these things about the reels and uh, also the profile on Instagram. And I started to follow also the persons, one of the persons that you mentioned that it was Insta Coach Mike, because he does yeah. very appealing reels. Is well, is very good at his work. Yeah. Obviously, the editing is very good. Yeah, 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 and it's very inspiring. Really, for um, he does very actionable tips. Uh, right. And this is also, yeah, I think that this is also what I have to start to do. Um, like you say, you know, more more the visual reels and not just the verbal reels because the verbal reels are what I have. It cannot be too much editing, although, because like <laughs> I told you, I'm trying to mini minimize time. But uh, like I remember that of, oh, okay, the light bulbs and try to explain we don't like white lights because we are sensitive yeah. to lights and all you of that know, things. And you can start with simple visual hooks slowly and gradually. And then when, you know, it picks up, you can go for bigger visual hooks. But right now you can begin with the smaller ones, like you said right now, those small light bulbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, I, I just, now I, I, I follow also an influencer and uh, her thing was very easy. She has a book launch and of course she's, she's putting all her uh, audience into her book launch. And one of the things it was the visual book was very easy. It was just her with four different dresses and asking to the persons, which dress do you prefer for my book launch? You know, and it's just like, 
engaging the people uh, in an indirect way to her book. And I think this is very clever. And in fact, it's visual and it's very easy to do. We I just do one thing with four different dresses and I can use this kind of visual hook also uh, as an inspiration to my own reels and think, okay, as a... 100%. As you know, I... 100%. So many times people build their identity with a piece of clothing or a piece of accessory. If you follow this another Insta coach, I am not able to... Pink Sparrow something is her name. You would see she wears only one piece of cloth in her reels all the time since the time her account has started. She wears a pink coat and a pink pant and a white shirt inside. That's her dress. And the name of the everything is pink in her branding. It's Pink Sparrow something. And uh, <clears throat> her entire branding, all her reels are only in this cloth. And that saves so much of time. Whenever you have to, you know, film reels, you know, one cloth has picked up and then you do it. You don't have to think about, oh, I did my last set in this. How will I look in this? That goes off. And then we remember them like that, right? Oh, that girl with the pink coat. Then there is this guy uh, I have seen. He wears such big glasses. All his reels has a little bit of him close up with the big glasses. So now people have started calling him the big guy glasses reel. So, you know, there are certain elements that are picked up, which kind of makes your brand identity on Instagram. Those are also really nice ways to do something uh, differently or in a unique way, wherein people are able to catch, oh, this girl is like this, or that, uh, you know, that guy does this, and that brand identity is picked up for recall value. Mm. Well, that is, in fact, an idea. Yeah, so that uh, yeah, you are very personalized and in which, uh, people recognize you very easily, in right. fact. And once you pick that up, like, for example, as simple as wearing big glasses, once you pick that up, then you don't have to do variety of visual hook. Then you use a very strong verbal hook and you use that identity that you've built as a visual hook. And then your job is done. You know, you'll be able to okay. achieve the time minimalism that you were looking at. Okay. So you are saying that the visual hook can be just one of that, uh, a small characteristic that we have. Correct. Yes. If we are not doing visual, uh, big visual hooks, then that small characteristics can also be there. For example, I might start all my reels by drinking water from this bottle. That can become a visual hook. And then people can go around saying, the girl that drinks water in her reels, that can be my identity. Okay. I should have my cats always with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. it can be. So women who always has cats in her uh, reels, that could, that could be your identity easily. Yeah. Just that one and a half months I'm without cats because I go two weeks uh, to rest, you know, and then my mother takes care of the cats and then at this time I don't have cats. That's absolutely okay. In those two weeks, you can film your reels ahead of time so that nobody knows that you're yeah. not with the cats for the next two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Or I could have a, a, a puppet or something like that that is always uh, also characteristic. This is a good idea. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you very much for uh, the brainstorming. So, uh, if there are no more participants, can I ask uh, things that uh, are not directly related with the lead magnet or this is very specific for lead magnets? Uh, this is basically for lead generation. So, do you have questions that lead are general specific or lead generation specific? Okay, so, uh, no, it was... Uh... I don't think that this was a lead generation, really. It, no. Then I ask uh, in your other lives. Okay. Yeah, it's just some mind. idea. Yes. Okay. So let me see if I have other questions here. Anyhow, like I tell you, for now, what I've seen is that in Instagram, as lead generation, it's uh, uh, everybody is betting much more on videos. Correct. But it's I really video. don't have time for now to make reels, you know, every day. I don't. So what I do um, is that uh, I schedule all my posts except 
Tuesdays that it's the reels. What I do is that I schedule for five weeks because at least on my account, I can only schedule due for five weeks. I schedule the Monday quotes for five weeks and then the other one for five weeks and then the other one for five weeks and then Tuesdays, which is the reels that I do. Um, this is the only video I have really. Although no. I see... all. So I don't have time to make much for, uh, more videos. Also, one of the things that is very um, engaging now is uh, these videos that are uh, like uh, ex uh, uh, taken from a, a movie or it's a celebrity and all of that. Uh, and uh, do you know how this is usually done? That's called editing. That's a part of an editing process. What I would suggest is editing is a tedious job. It takes time okay. to edit videos. So either you can shoot the videos or you can edit the videos. If you keep going on doing both the things, you might get a bit exhausted. So those are memes that are used and memes are used in the beginning of the person to engage the person. But maybe you would not need that kind of an editing is because you're already using a visual hook or a verbal hook and you're already using a strong verbal hook. So you might not need a celebrity or a meme to a to you know hook your audience but you can begin with uh, editing yourself by using tools like inshot and capcut those are i simple use capcut tools. yeah those are simple tools that you can use for editing and slowly and gradually when you are leveling up your game on instagram you can go for a va and hire a va to do your videos yeah i use capcut for the auto captions because yeah. they also have auto captions in Portuguese, and in in fact, it works very well. So I use uh, CapCut for that because my videos now to make reels without captions is really like, I I it's not worthwhile. Uh, right. So I use it for for the captions. Also, it's one thing that I might want to change is I see that the captions are usually very. Um, there is always a text in the beginning right. and I usually have just the title, but it's small and maybe I want to make it bigger because my public is highly sensitive persons. I always have the title, you know, highly sensitive uh, people and then two points and then the theme of the reel. But I think I have maybe to try to uh, do something that is more catchy, you know. Right, right. You could try it. Mm. Okay. Okay. So do, do you have any, uh, I don't know, uh, kind of brainstorming or ideas like things that could be catchy for this kind of uh, public? Because there are no, no more questions, I think, more persons. So <laughs> I'm wondering, because you are a very cre creative person. Um mm -hmm. I think the only advice I'd like to give you would be that focus on the result of the audience that they're looking forward to. Try to understand that what would be their daily conversations in the house. What would they be looking answers to and create videos on those topics. The more we talk according to what the user is looking an answer for, the more we are able to relate with them. And make sure that every time, wherever you are, whatever strategy you're using, just get as many opt-ins as you can. Because those viewers, those followers on Instagram, uh, you know, makes no sense because they are the platform's uh, followers. They're not technically your followers. They follow Instagram account. So they don't know, you don't know who those, if let's say, for example, you have 500 followers, you don't know who those 500 followers are. You don't know their names. You don't know their email IDs. It is just an illusion on Instagram that those 500 people follow you. So try to get them in your email list and into your opt-in. Only then the sales will happen. The best way is to get those people into your pipelines. So focus on that. Even when you create videos, like you said, you always give them a call to action for a page opt-in. Keep doing that and bring them to your funnel. That should be the goal. Yes, and I have to to tell you that in this, uh, both with um, 
Well, when I can and when I have time, I've been also watching the SEO uh, workshop from uh, David, and then I saw you with Kevin and all of this. And I have to say that it's really true. It definitely makes a difference because uh, I would have uh, every week, like, I don't know, around 10 or 15 new uh, persons on my email list. Yeah. Or, or maybe 20 it would be the most and now i'm having 40 that's so, fine yeah every week i have new 40 uh, uh new leads and uh, it definitely makes a difference because i was very just focused on giving value and then like always forgetting the cta the call to action that's for it. the persons you know so and also for my it is always important to remind the person what to do because we are also like them. We get so busy in our life that we forget what it needs to be done. So if I don't tell you, for example, when this session is ending and if I don't tell you, we have the Zenler Education Live coming up on Monday if you have questions join. So you might just forget that if I have questions, I would have to come on Mondays because everybody gets busy with life. So it is important to remind them that, hey, now that you have consumed this information, this is your next step. So it is actually helping them understand that how to move forward. Yes, yes, I, I understand that because in fact, some of the people that come to my discovery call, what they ask is what I do. What, what yeah. do I really do to help them? So this means that I'm not, uh, I'm just adding value and I'm not even being clear about how I help people. So for sure, I see that there are, I need to add some posts and stuff like that. Those kind yeah. of posts that tell you who I am, what I do, how can yeah. I help you? You know, because the person's, Ask me, what do you really do? You know, and, like, and that so is, that uh, if I may say, if I may say, that's uh, not a good position to be in because it, you know, reduces your authority. When someone is sitting in a call or when someone is speaking to you and they already know you and your work, you have an authority to speak to them that this is how I help you. The answer in the call or the conversation should be how I help you, not who I am. If they are coming with the question of who I am, your work is double. First, you have to build the trust and then you have to convince them that you're the right person to serve them. The trust should be built before they come to you. And that is why all of this content and outreach and everything is required because the trust should be built and they should know who is the person I'm dealing with. So you have very rightly picked up. Your customers always tell you what to do next. Now, your first step should be create posts around who are you, what your brand does and what results do you drive. So focus on building trust through your content mechanism so that when people come on the call with you or come to any of your interactions, they should at least have the trust on you. When I say trust, that means they should know what you do. Okay. You said that first who I am, then what I do. And it was uh, another one that you mentioned. Who I am, what I do, uh, how have I learned it? I mean, who? how are you credible to give them the offer or whatever you're offering them? And then how can you help them? Yes. Because it's really, I'm too focused on just giving value and forgetting about the other things. And then people, okay, this is interesting, but so what? You know, so yeah. Correct. Okay. Definitely, um, although I studied marketing, uh, I, I think I tend to forget these things. And also, I study marketing, digital marketing in 2020, and I have to tell you, a lot of things change completely. The they Instagram... <laughs> Yes, I mean, the Instagram profile used to be, you know, to, to write our profile used to be, uh, uh, I help this person uh, to, you know, the, uh, the, the goal by means of. This was, you know, and now it's like you told, and it's like the bold promise, the authority, the 
testimonial and right. the CTA. And it's just like a complete different thing. And funny enough, and then I started to see different persons, um, how it was their profile. And I can see the persons that, that updated their profile and the persons that still have the profile in that manner that uh, I do this, uh, I help these persons with this and by yeah. means of that and blah, blah, blah. And completely different. And I understand that it's really nowadays what you've shared, you know, the, the bold promise and so on. So, of course, we are being much more direct, you know, and uh, um, also giving more credibility what I do in the part of the authority, uh, in the part of the testimonial. I say that I have a newsletter with, with thousands of followers, which is true. And this is much more catchy than saying just I help you with this and that because the people don't still don't understand what I do. And at least it, it gives me all this credibility, you know. And it's not so much about the academic thing, because I do have a, a specialization in highly sensitive person and all of that academically, but people are not interested on that. They are more interested, oh, how many persons also follow her? What results did she get? And uh, People are, yeah. You know, the only answer people are looking for today is that if I invest a dollar, what is the value that I'm going to get or what is the return I'm going to get from that? That return mm. can be calculated in any way. So all they're looking for is where is my money going and what am I getting? If you're able to answer that question through your posts, somehow, then people would already be sold before coming to you. Their question is that how would my money make sense if I put my money into this particular thing? And that's the answer that they're looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very based upon results. 100%. Um, it's, it's all based on results. Yes, exactly. So the sales page uh, also, it's uh, the sales page is just about the results that the people are getting. They are not even that much interested. Okay, but with what and so on. Yeah, of course, I, I include that. I included that in the program. You'll get this bonus and this bonus. But basically, it was very focused on saying, okay, this is the result you are going to get when you do this Correct. program. And then now the community is the same thing, you know, the connection, the growing, the this, the that. It's everything. And again, we can see sales pages, which are not focused and marketing, which are not focused that what are the persons going to get. And maybe right. they don't convert that well. Correct. It is only about the results you need to focus on once and how soon can they get results that should always be the focus mm -hmm. thank you for asking so many wonderful questions sophia thank you uh, for for all your trainings it was definitely uh you know you kevin david it's been definitely a game changer because i should tell that i'm already for years or three years with new Zandler, but I was just, uh, you know, not updating the things. And it really updating like my blog with the SEO tips. I could see the results. I can see the results with your lead magnet tips. Really, like I told you, I mean, 40 new leads every week for me is good. I mean, for other persons, but for me, it's good. Right. You know, I'm happy. Of course, I'm happy that the more it comes, but it's already very good improvement in such a, sh a short time. So uh, I'm very grateful for you guys and all Thank this education. So much, and to you, Sandler, really, really, I'm very grateful because... It's not a one-time thing that we study uh, this and then it's done. It's so much update and so fast that things change that we start to see that they don't work anymore. That's how we Today. see that things are changing. It doesn't work anymore, this kind of stuff. So how can I improve, you know? So uh, your time. education, yeah, is very important. Okay, so see you Thank soon. You so Namaste. Much, Namaste. Thank you, Thank very you much. so much Namaste, dear. for asking bye -bye. the wonderful so... questions. This will be recorded and I'm sure all the questions you've asked is definitely going to help all the viewers who are going to be watching on replay. Thank you so much.
Okay, dear. Bye bye. Have a nice bye. day. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone who participated, watched, and became a part of the Lead Generation Month series. We ran live for the entire month of September, and we had close to 13 sessions. We covered everything from outreach to SEO, uh, to Google search, to YouTube growth. There was no topic that we left untouched in the entire month of Lead Generation series. Uh, you have an option to ask your questions. You can put hashtag replay under any of the sessions and tag me and I'll be able to help you. All these sessions will move to a YouTube tutorial as well. These sessions will also turn into a blog for you to consume and you can watch these lessons on your own leisure time. Implement strategies, they are bite-sized, they are standalone. You can pick up any video you want and start implementing. I will see you now on Monday with the Zenler Educational Live session. Until then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep making money as creators. Thank you, everyone.